they look kind of more like empanada that are like braided on the outside. Like a lot of fish and curries we had here in Malaysia. Very boldly spiced. First stop is Salahuddin, a family-owned business, and it's been here 83 years. How old is this? 83. Wow. wow. And this oven has been here since? Wow. So old school, the brick where they smoke, bake their baked goods, it's also been since the beginning. And imagine having a baked goods baked on an 83-year-old oven. How about to try it? <laughs> I'm a huge fan of places like this, these old world classic. Like you walk in there, it's no frills, it's just got pictures on the wall and I, I just love it. It's like stepping back into time, really old world place. So this curry puff, AKA curry puff, really interesting if you look at it. I'm used to the ones that look kind of more like empanada that are like braided on the outside and more round. This is like a triangular, very flaky looking. And it's like this interesting yellowish color. It reminds me, if you're a fellow New Yorker, it reminds me of the old school Jamaican beef patties you get at the pizza store, so at the pizza shop. So this one looks like this is the kambing, it's the mutton. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite. Mm. Wow. Now the crust of this is unbelievably smoky. I, I, I can't believe how smoky this tastes. This is not even when you get to the filling. This is just the outside. It's just it's definitely a product of that wood fired oven. I never tasted anything like this. So the filling you have a mix of minced mutton and the potato. That smoky flavor also does penetrate to the filling. Oh wow, this is the smokiest curry pop you're ever gonna taste. It's that old world craftsmanship here. <laughs> so you also got something sweet here. We got the coconut bun that's really nice and soft here. And when it's ripped open like this, you see all that brown uh, shredded coconut in here. Probably with some sugar, let's take a, take a bite of it. It looks really good. You're a coconut lover like me, you gotta get this coconut bun. Cause you get that nice crunchy coconut texture. It's not too sweet. You really get that hit of coconut flavor, very strong. Seems like baked goods of one of the major things that you really have to get here in Johor Bahru. This is a banana cake and it is from a place that's been here since 1919. Every banana cake you get or they give you very fresh and warm. They advise you to open it a little bit to let it air out and it's still warm. It's been sitting here on our table for like probably 15 minutes and we're about to uncover why people would go in line, take bags of it, see how delicious this banana cake is to ourselves. Just the smell. Wow, that's a lot of bananas. So this bakery, Hyapju, is very famous here. Might be the most famous place in all of Johor Bahru. It's incredible. So normal times you have people come here from Singapore. I'm sure they load up on this. It smells amazing. It's just so, I love how it's so warm. It's so soft, fluffy. I can't even talk about it anymore. I'm gonna take a bite. Mm. Oh my God. It really is like one of the lightest, fluffiest. It melts in your mouth. It has that banana flavor, but it's not too strong. So if, if you don't love banana, give this one a try. You, you might be sold on it. And what I love about it is not too sweet. It's got a slight bit of buttery flavor to it. 
but it's a really well balanced, it's really more like a banana bread than banana cake. And the thing is about it, there is no place there to sit and eat. This is all takeaway. So there's a Kopi Tam across the street. We actually went a little down the block to a spot called Chaiwala. It's a cool coffee shop. They, they, they have espresso, which I love. I think this case is gonna pair perfectly with this espresso. We highly recommend it, especially if you like espresso, cappuccino, um, just outside of your classic Kopi Tam coffee, come here, because it goes so well with this banana cake. Wow. And what's cool about it too, that Hyapchu, they use an old school wood-fired oven. So kind of like at Salahuddin Bakery, it's an old world spot. And they've been in business for so long for good reason. And the hype is real and then some. Definitely do not miss Hyapchu when you're in Johor Bahru. Can't stress it enough. Easily polish off a whole tray of this. Another legendary Johor Eats, and this one is Pisang Goreng from Pisang Goreng Mawar. It's right outside their successful soccer practice stadium. You will not miss this place also because it is always crowded with local. Pisang Goreng is a classic tea time snack here in Johor, and Pisang Goreng is fried banana. So that's what the Pisang is banana, Goreng is fried and they have all these crispy bits too. So this actually reminds us a lot of the seafood we get in the east coast of Peninsular Malaysia. They would fry it and have these crispy bits. You can even just eat the crispy bits like this. Like... Mm. Hear that crunch? So each piece is this size, so they're sliced. Now I'm gonna try one by itself first. Mm. Nice and sweet, but it's not too sweet. They also have another variety here sometimes, uh, the Pisang Raja. That's the bigger banana. That one's really extra sweet and really juicy. Uh, that's not always found though. It's third time here. They only had it the first time. But what makes the Pisang Goreng special here in Johor is the sambal ketchup dipping sauce. So sambal ketchup is the soy sauce, but it's mixed in with some uh, chili flakes. There's looks like there's some sort of citrus, probably calamansi or lime in here. So you gotta give it a nice dip, just like that. Mm. That's the ultimate sweet, savory combination there. You get the sweetness of the banana, it's crispy, and then you have that, that sauce, it's got a mix of the salty from the soy, you have the little bit of spice, you have the little citrusy in there too, so it's really just so many flavors going in there together. The sweetness from the sauce and the banana, the spicy, the salty, tangy. I love this combo. You can really see why the sambal ketchup is so special for Johor Pisang Goreng. It's addictive. The more, the more you eat it, the more you like it. It goes nicely with Kopi O Kosong ice, just a plain black coffee iced to kind of cut through the richness of this snack. the healthiest meal we've ever had in Malaysia and our favorite. Look at the hat. We're here at uh, Botok Botok Ibunda. So we're here for the namesake of Botok Botok. It's a very special dish and we actually had tried it last week. Thanks to our friend, Linda. Was <laughs> you with us again? <laughs> again and she, again. She has just been <laughs> hooking us up with some of these gems here in JB. We never would have known about this dish or this place without Linda. So this is something we absolutely loved our first try here. And we wanted to come back and really watch it be prepared because it doesn't do it justice. When you just have it, it's delicious, but you have to see how it's made too because it's a really, really cool to watch. It's, it looks simple, but there's a lot of work that goes into it. So it's botok botok, it's the tengiri fish. 
There's a special curry blend that's in the pot over there. So there's uh, turmeric in there, lemongrass, galango, all types of other spices in there. And they use all these different leaves. So this sub you can eat just the leaves and the spice. So it turns into like a paste after it's steamed. So you wrap it up, you have the leaves, the fish, the spice blend. You wrap it up in the banana leaf, it gets steamed. So it's very healthy. Yeah, June behind the camera's eating and I'm about to do the same. Look at that. It's just covered in this spice. That is just insane. There's so much flavor in here. The lemongrass is so strong. Then you have lime leaf in here too. It's spicy. It's not really creamy because it's more of like a drier paste. But it reminds me a lot of some of the more aromatic like fish head curries that we've eaten here in Malaysia. So this dish does have some Javanese roots as well, but this is distinctly Malay flavor. And I can taste it too. It definitely tastes like a lot. I mentioned like a lot of fish head curries we had here in Malaysia. Very boldly spiced. I haven't even touched the fish yet. That's how flavorful these greens with this spice is. Like, if you see all the food we eat, if we eat more of these greens in our life. We could eat this every day. It'll help balance us out and make us healthier. I, I can just eat just like this, but the fish here, the tangiri is very dense. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop it up with some of that spice paste. Fish is very dense, it's nice, it's clean taste. It, it pairs perfectly with the spice blend, but I gotta tell you, I could just, I treat it like a bonus. I could just eat these leaves with this spice all day long. That's just, that's how good it is. Definitely one of the best ways to get your veggies in. And for your pescatarians, this is the dish for you too. Really one of the healthiest, most flavorful dishes we had in Malaysia. It's a combined, flavorful, healthy, not easy to do. No oil? <laughs> it's the hardest thing. The hardest thing to do. We love just the history behind it. Just it's like family business down through third generation now. And the business was only started relatively recently, but the generate the recipes come down from third generation now. And what's cool too is that this uh, the botok potok you can buy it here, but they also sell it to some other restaurants and warungs around JB. So they supply it other places with it. It's a very labor intensive dish, especially to make that spice powder make the spice blend so not everybody's able to make it so they specialize we are at the coolest place in Malaysia this place has been here since the 1920s look at this place it is so cool to be here right now. We are about to have a drink. This is a toddy or a coconut wine. Ooh, it smells so strong. It's fermented distilled coconut wine. So I'm so used to drinking this red, deep red, almost kind of look like a red wine. I like this so much, she actually brought back a big bottle to take home. And that's the beautiful thing about here. It's also so cheap. It's three ringgit for a mug. And if you know about Malaysia and the beer and wine prices here, they're very expensive. Like a can of beer is normally gonna run you about eight ringgit. So I'd much rather have a glass of this for three ringgit. Reminds me a little bit of pulque in Mexico. He fermented agave, but the consistency is definitely different. That one in Mexico is kind of gloopy. This one's a little more smooth, but it does have a little bit of carbonation to it. And it's a little bit sweet. Uh, I like that it's, it doesn't taste strong when you drink it, but you can start feeling it after some of that mug. This is a must visit spot. I love the flavor. It's just so smooth. You sit here, you chill, the vibe is like, no, nowhere else we've been in Malaysia has had this kind of vibe.